so good morning everyone so today we are going to discuss lecture number 34 and 5 of module 5 that is preservation so today we will talk about preservation in detail <coughs> so before moving towards this topic preservation let's have a brief review of previous topics so that we may connect all the dimension so basically we are studying <coughs> dimensions required for human order and we talked about first dimension of education during this lecture 18 to 21 we talked about content of the education process of the education policies related to education and we saw the importance of education in all activities of human being then we discussed about dimension of health where we talked about human being coexistence of the self and body we talked about the feeling of self regulation we talked about feeling of prosperity we talked about program for ensuring health and then system and policies required for ensuring health in everyone then we talked about dimension of justice where we discussed about human human relationship established values expressed values system of justice then we talked about this dimension of production where we talked about production types of production need of production process of production then policies related to production then we saw the importance of exchange and storage in this human order and we discussed this exchange with the feeling of mutual fulfillment and then in previous lecture we talked about right utilization and protection where we discussed the importance of right utilization and protection of the produced physical facilities now in this lecture we are going to discuss about preservation so in lecture number 34 and 35 we will talk about the preservation so let's see what is the purpose of this dimension of preservation so enrichment and protection of natural resources ensuring mutual fulfillment with rest of the nature so why this preservation is required what is its purpose so simply to enrich and protection of the natural resources which ensures mutual fulfillment with rest of the nature so as we seen many times that natural resources are required for human being to run the body of human being to run system this in a smooth manner so there is a need to enrich and protect of the available natural resources so for preservation number 1 identification of natural resources for which this enrichment and protection needs to be ensured is required so basically we have to identify right natural resources which is required for a human life which is required for a smooth running of this system and then we will talk about enrichment and protection of that natural resources so for example air water forest land minerals animals birds etc these are natural resources which are required for a fulfilling life similarly enrichment and protection needs to be ensured during any production process so whenever we are producing things whenever doing activity of production 
then whatever is produced to be enriched and protect for the smooth running of the system. Then there is a need to talk about broad guidelines for enrichment and protection. And then a study of methods and processes available for ensuring this enrichment and protection. So with this, we will discuss with this background, we are going to discuss about this preservation. So why preservation? Because of ensuring the continuity of the role of the rest of the nature. So as we have seen many times that the four orders, if we include intention of the human beings, are living with the mutual fulfillment. So out of these four order, the rest three orders except human being are already mutually fulfilling with each other and participating in mutual fulfillment of human being. So for human being, the three orders are essential because of these order play important role in weather and climate balance. So to ensure this proper role of the whole ecosystem, the rest three orders are also required. So to ensure continuity of their mutual fulfillment, preservation is required. Similarly, mutually fulfilling for human being, air, water, etc. are the basic need for every human being. So if we are talking about the mutually fulfilling life, if we are talking about mutually fulfilling life, then the need of this air, water, etc. in continuity are required. So if they are present in continuity, then we can live a fulfilling life. So that's why preservation is required. Similarly, whatever we use in production processes in the form of raw material, all the raw material are available through this production process. So when we interact with rest of nature, we get raw material for all kind of productions. So to be available this raw material in continuity, this preservation of rest of the three orders are required. Similarly, if you see the participation of these orders, there is a need of balance of rain, balance of heat, cold is done in a self-organized manner in rest of the nature. And all these order are participating in this self-organized manner to ensure the balance of climate, balance of weather. So they play a very important role in maintaining this definite climate and temperature which are required for survival of human body and survival of many kind of creatures. That's why this preservation is required. Similarly, we can see that animals, birds, etc. help in this cross pollination, plants and trees help in improving the quality of soil and in protecting the plants from diseases. That's why the preservation is required. So it is important to ensure preservation of those resources in nature. Even it doesn't appear its participation directly. So it doesn't matter the available resources are participating directly or indirectly. But preservation is required for all those resources. So for these purposes, dimension of preservation is required. So if we preserve the rest of nature, if we preserve the orders in nature, then they help us to ensure our fulfilling life. So for our fulfilling life, the presence of 
the rest of the three orders is required and for that preservation from human side is also required <coughs> so for example <coughs> like water preservation so there is a need to preserve this water and there are many ways to preserve this uh, rain water for example rain water harvesting every agriculture field and every house can be designed in a manner can be designed so as to work as rain water harvesting unit so there is need a need to show creativity there is need to evolve such kind of social structures evolve such kind of architectures so that every house can work as a unit of water conservation if we are able to do this then there will be enough water in the earth so for example you can see in the village system there were ponds and wells there were a concept of ponds and wells and if you study this village system in every village there is a pond there is a there are wells which are used to conserve this water basically they help to recharge the ground level water so if you want to study more about this you can refer this book by anupam mishra where he has shown the importance of these ponds and wells then what else can be done proper disposal of factory wastage so there are many kind of wastages which come from the factories so there is a need to dispose them properly in a planned manner so that they do not disturb the disposal do not disturb the ground level water similarly there is a need to dis design a structure so that human excreta can be disposed in a proper manner so proper disposal of non degradable items like plastic so at least not dumping them in the rivers or ocean this can be ensured so we have to plant we have to show our creativity to preserve the natural resources and this creativity can be shown if we have the right kind of education and sanskar so with human education i am able to see the relationship with every unit of this nature and there is a natural tendency that develops from such kind of education sanskar which ultimately motivate us to design such kind of system so if we are providing education related to this nature then definitely many students will show their creativity to design such kind of system similarly there is a need to conserve forest so forest preservation so what can we do plant trees cut them only when they are matured and definitely before cutting this we should be ensured about our need so if we are able to identify our need then there is a need to cut this plants and cut this plant when they are enough mature then ensure its right utilization avoid indiscriminate use of wood so if if a human doesn't have wisdom to discriminate between right utilization misutilization or indulgence as we talked in previous lecture then it becomes very difficult to ensure the right utilization of the natural resources so there is a need to imbibe as right wisdom in every student in every people then only this 
right utilization of the resources can be ensured. Then we can work another concept like concept of social forestry. Similarly, plantation can be done keeping in mind the biodiversity and monoculture plantation can be avoided as it is a problematic as, as it does not fit in cyclic and mutually enriching process. We can promote use of forest resources over mineral resources. Similarly, for example, use of clay, wood and bamboo in place of cement and iron etc. So there are many options which we have to find out to preserve the natural resources. Similarly, we can talk about soil preservation. So avoid or at least reduce use of urea, pesticide, etc. in this land. So because of this tendency of madness of profit, people nowadays are using this pesticide, urea, which is ultimately degrading the quality of soil and which is ultimately harming the human body. So at least we can avoid such kind of thing. So we can prepare and use natural manure, fertilizer and pest control as far as possible. We can prepare it from the natural resources available around us like neem and there are many plants using them we can prepare this natural manure and fertilizers. Then avoid cutting trees particularly in the area of steep slope because when we cut trees in the area of a steep slope then the area is not able to preserve the water. So we have to ensure this we can do at least such kind of thing. So ensure plantation in such areas if it is already cut down. So there is a need, there is a priority to at least plant those trees and protect those trees till they grow enough. So all this kind of efforts can be made to preserve the natural resources. Similarly, air preservation. We can see their polluted air discharged by factories, uses of petrol, diesel and other fuels and all this causing the problem in the air. So what can be remedies? Avoid factory processes which pollute air, filter air before discharge etc. We can also use alternative energy sources. So there, these are some possible remedies and you can think of more remedies. So you can make a list, you can do this exercise at your home. See the problem of natural resources around you and try to write down possible remedies of these problems. Similarly, if we are talking about animal and birds preserve their natural habitat which we are destroying today unknowingly. So we can plan such kind of structure related to house that may help to accommodate in this uh, natural habitat of various animals and birds etc. So preserve the water and the air, avoid animal or bird hunting, such kind of things can be ensured to preserve the natural resources. Then problems arising out, not taking care of these discussed things, so there are many problems which we are facing every day and not every day almost every second. So there is a very 
noticeable problem of ozone layer depletion because of not taking care of this preservation of natural resources <coughs> the whole river or some area of ocean becoming total unusable rather harmful because of this industrialization etc you are aware the problem of glaciers melting in the poles problem of global warming extinction of many breeds of animal and birds resource depletion damages of human health that is because of air pollution etc so all of us are aware about the problem arising due to ignorance of this preservation so if we preserve the natural resources if we adopt lifestyle that promotes preserving this natural resources then these problems will slow down gradually so we have to ensure such kind of education we have to ensure such kind of tendencies through education sanskar so that one can find one can recognize the relationship with rest of nature and develop tendencies to nurture protect the natural resources now we can discuss what to do at the level of family and society so what can we do ensure right utilization as discussed before so in family we can have this kind of practices in family we can make it in our daily routine that we are rightly utilizing the things or not so we can have a meeting with our family members and we should discuss this kind of thing in family what the products what are the natural resources available to us whether we are rightly utilizing those things or not this can be happen at the level of family and with this kind of environment a child will get a natural tendency to right utilize the things so it can be ensured at the level of family then protection as far as possible so this is another issue which can hand, be handled at the level of family and society so in a society we can design things so that protection of the natural resources may be possible then we have to change our lifestyle also at home at workplace in the community so with the change of lifestyle we will be able to ensure this protection we will be able to ensure this preservation of the nature so there is a need to change lifestyle at home along with this there is a need to change the lifestyle at workplace and in the community community so we have to make such kind of system which encourage the lifestyle that helps to preserve the natural resources so you can do this exercise at your home you find out what lifestyle can we adopt so that it preserve resources at home it protect resources at home why what kind of lifestyle can be adopted at workplace to preserve the natural resources similarly in community all these things can be done at the level of family and society so if we do this at the level of family and society then many resources can be preserved can be protect with this little change and will be available to next generation in a sufficient quantity similarly what can we do at policy level so at policy level clean and water 
clean air and water is the basic need of every human being so if we preserve this we this can be ensured so at least at policy level there should be provision so that clean air and water must be ensured for everyone and not only human being this clean air and water is the basic need of animal and birds as well so we have to design our system not only taking human in center but taking the four orders in the center so we have to understand that the air water is not only the need of human being it is the new need of animals and birds too then we can develop proper guidelines for giving approval to industry keeping the above in mind so we can make rules and regulations we can develop a guidelines for industry with a proper lifestyle so that they may preserve the natural resources many guidelines are being developed as the awareness about this concern is increasing worldwide but only ensuring this guideline would not work would not be sufficient till we have right understanding in ourselves so through education sanskar we can develop that wisdom that helps us to discriminate the things and with that wisdom we can make such policies and rules and regulations guidelines for the industry for the social structure etc and preservation of nature should be the first priority rather than cost optimization so at the policy level it can be ensured that when we are going to establish any production system when ever we are going to interact with rest of nature for raw materials then this preservation of nature should be the first priority rather than cost optimization so today somehow this cost optimization is in focus and the preservation of nature is not in the priority so at policy level it should be ensured that preservation of nature should be the first priority then we are losing invaluable resources in the name of cost optimization or better lifestyle so we have to review what would be the better lifestyle a lifestyle that preserve the natural resources a lifestyle that protect the natural resources would be better lifestyle or a lifestyle that consumes natural resources in a indiscriminate manner would be the good lifestyle better lifestyle we have to discuss about this better lifestyle so today is in the name of better lifestyle more and more things are being consumed in fact it has become status of the society it has become a status of the industry the more you consume the more you are developed and in this the name of development the name of better life style very valuable resources are being damaged which are ultimately affecting our body our whole ecosystem so at policy level all these things should be ensured so presently these basic needs are given very low priority over profit maximization so whenever there are dilemma whether we should preserve the natural resources or we should maximize our profit people generally tend to choose the profit maximization which is because of the lack of wisdom so with this right kind of education sanskar it can be ensured and with that kind of education sanskar there is need to make such policies where people starts giving priority to natural resources rather than 
profit maximization. So we need to put them in first priority while giving approval to any industry. And so many things can be uh, developed at policy level. So many guidelines can be developed at policy level that would basically help in a healthy lifestyle. So preservation is required. Preservation of natural resources is required for a fulfilling life because when we are talking about fulfilling life, we are including everything related to human being and rest of the nature. So for human being, the continuity of rest of the nature is required because the rest of the orders participate for ensuring the whole ecology balanced. So to balance this ecology, a preservation of natural resources is required. So to preserve those things, we can make some efforts at the level of individual, at the level of family, at the level of society, and at the level of nature, rest three orders are already participating. We can have a look how we can participate in preserving those natural resources. So at policy level, there is a large scope when we are making policy related to education, when we are making policy related to health, related to production, are we ensuring this preservation of natural resources while giving education to child? When we are giving approval to any production process, when we are giving approval to any industry, if we are ensuring this at the level of policy, at the level of dimension of education, then this desire of living in a fulfilling manner can be achieved. So that's all from my side for this lecture. Thank you very much. Let's meet in the next lecture. Have a good day. Thank you.